Whosoever holds this hammer, if they be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. With Marvel's Avengers, everyone gets to be worthy to wield the mighty Mjolnir. But if you're going to take up the hammer, you might wonder, what's the best way to use it? I am the strongest Avenger. Maybe you're brand new to Avengers. If you picked it up at the All Access Weekend or from one of the sales and you're just getting started, welcome. We're happy to have you as a part of this gaming community. Trust me when I say that there are a lot of really good people who play this game all the time and I hope that you get a chance to meet them. Maybe you've been playing since the beginning of the game and you've just never played Thor because you were never sure how. Maybe your question is, how do I get to be the mighty Thor? What's the best way to play the God of Thunder? Before we get into it, here's my usual disclaimer about this game and honestly, really just any game. The right way to play a game is always the way that is most fun for you. So if you don't like this build, if it doesn't work for you, if it's not fun, just don't use it. If it does work for you though, I'm gonna tell you how you can do it as good as you can. One more thing before we get into the build because this stuff is important. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and come find me on Twitch for regular Avengers content. If you're on the PlayStation or PC, we can even play together. I'll put the link down in the description below. Okay, so, do you actually want to be the God of Thunder? When you wield Mjolnir, do you want to not just be worthy, but also feel worthy? That's what this build is all about. The essential playstyle is pretty simple. You fly into combat, you throw your hammer down, and strike anything and everything in sight with so much lightning that someone should probably report it to the weather channel. With my build, the lightning never needs to stop and it's gonna hit for a ton of damage too. You're gonna melt through bosses and mobs and really anything the game throws at you with this build. So what are the essentials? First, let's talk stats, and there are two that you really want to focus on, Valor and Precision. There are some people who think that this build should only need Valor, since it's the stat that affects critical damage, but I tested it with more Valor and less Precision, and I actually did less damage, so focus on both. Little side note, in other ranged critical builds, like for Iron Man for example, Proficiency is an important stat, but on this build, I'm going to show you in a minute why it's absolutely not. Now, the thing that you're going to have to grind for, the gear that makes the build, and there is one piece above all others that is definitely essential, and that is a slot 2 piece of gear, a ranged piece of gear that drops with either ranged critical attacks grant an intrinsic burst, or ranged critical defeats grant an intrinsic burst. You're going to need an intrinsic burst on this build, because otherwise you're going to run out of lightning. Mine, as you can see, dropped with ranged critical attacks grant a damage buff, and ranged critical defeats grant an intrinsic burst, and honestly I don't know how this piece of gear could get any better other than having the stat rolls be slightly higher. This is an ideal piece of gear. If you find something that looks like this, never ever 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 let it go. While you're looking for that god rolled piece of gear, also consider what status damage your ranged attacks are doing. I would look for something positive like Pym, Plasma, or Cosmic because your lightning does shock because it's lightning, so having something of the opposite status type is going to help you do more damage. You could probably stop there and already have a pretty good Thor build, but I'm going to give you a few more recommendations for gear to look for while you're on the way. The first one is a slot 1 gear piece that drops with a third perk that says percent increase critical attack damage from Odin Force attacks. The higher the percentage number, obviously the better, but that's the main thing you're looking for on a piece of gear that drops for slot 1. You're looking for increased critical attack damage from Odin Force attacks. It's important. In slot 3, I would look for a piece of gear that says taking damage grants a damage buff. It's a good way to basically guarantee that you're going to have a damage buff up most of the time. Because, let's be honest, you're taking a lot of damage as you go through missions, especially things like 
Tachyon Storms or the OLT. Get that on a piece of gear and you're going to do, again, even more damage, which is the point of this build. If you can get a piece in slot 3 that has a third perk that says damage reduction while aiming or damage reduction while airborne, and has perk 1 that says taking damage grants a damage buff, use it, unless the stat roll is really bad, because you're going to take less damage while throwing your hammer. Now, slot 4 is a little bit up to you. I happened to get his last Avenger standing exotic that rolled with really high stat rolls for Valor, Resolve, and Precision, so I don't think I'll really ever be taking this off. It also increases the amount of shock damage I do by 20%. If you can get this piece from last Avenger standing, I would say it's a good choice, but you also might sub this out for a piece of Tachyon gear, if you can find the right roll. The goal is look for perks and stats that mean that you do more damage. Now, if you're running a damage buff like we talked about, your major artifact is probably going to best be the Sacred Nornstone of Lethal Will, because it's going to make your damage buff last longer. And with a longer damage buff, again, you're going to do more damage. You also could experiment with the Void Tech Transponder or the Tactagon. Either one of those could work with your build. The Sacred Nornstone of Lethal Will works, and it works well, so it's what I use. For your minor artifacts, go full Valor and full Precision if you can. Honestly, an ISO 8 of Cosmic Affinity is good on any character at this point in the game, so if you get one with the right roll, feel free to use that as well. Mine happen to roll Valor, Precision, and Resolve, so of course I'm going to use that. But I do have extra Precision and Valor ISOs on hand, just in case I want to bump my numbers up higher. Little side note, if you don't know what the ISO 8 of Cosmic Affinity does, it means that when you take damage, you get a willpower burst and heroic energy burst. So you take damage, and then all of a sudden, you start healing, and you start getting your heroics back faster. That's why it's good on every character at this point, because what character can't use more heroic energy and more health? Also, if you've got an ISO that has increased damage from power attacks, and it's Valor or Precision, definitely use it. You're going to be doing a lot of power attacks with this build, and that perk does make a difference. I tested it on two Valor ISOs, one with that perk and one without. The one without the perk had more Valor, but I did more damage with that perk. Now, a build is not actually complete just by gear alone. You also have to consider the skills that are going to make your build even better, and I'm going to start by telling you the most important skill that you can select. It's under Mastery in the first range column, and it's called Critical Throw, and it is a must for this build. What this skill means, in essence, is that once you get the timing down, every single ranged attack is going to be a critical hit. Every single one. Guaranteed crits every time. Which means you do more damage, obviously, but it also means that the perks that we focused on in the gear section are going to proc more often because we're doing more crits. Other mastery skills I would select are range damage, unarmed damage, ionic bolts, maximum force, hung force, lightning field, charge resistance, and charging force. There's wiggle room on some of those, but those are the ones I selected and I think they work pretty well. When you get the champion points, put the first ones you get into critical damage and perk chance. Critical damage means you're going to do more damage with this build, like we said, because every hit is a critical hit. Perk chance means you're going to proc your perks like Intrinsic Boost and Damage Buff more often. From there, feel free to spend them however you want. Heroic Recharge Rate is good, I would recommend that, but the rest of those choices are up to you. If you get all of this, if you get this build set up this way, you're going to have a Thor that's going to clear any and every enemy in a matter of seconds, and honestly an entire 14 floor hive in record time. Let me know in the comments what you think, or if there's something you think that would make this build even better. I love to talk about these kinds of things and rethink builds if there's something that I could be doing better. Thank you for watching, come find me on Twitch, and I will see you next time.